Hey there fellow Dungeoneers, Michael here, back with another tutorial and uh, this is the second tutorial in a series of new tutorials and in this case I will be talking about character creation. Now I have a bit of a cold so there might be some coughing involved in this so please bear with me. I will also try to do this without too much editing and try to keep it quite short. So you might hear me struggle to find the correct words or do some mispronunciations since English is not my first language. Anyways, character creation is one of the favorite parts of this game for me. And uh, you need some basic stuff for this. You need the character sheets, you need a pen, you need a, an eraser, a die, a set of dice. In this case you need the D d10s, you need a d20 and a d6 and you do need of course the the rule book and depending on what kind of character you're creating you might also need the false prophet rule book in this case I will be doing a wizard so I don't need the false prophet rule book I also recommend having the quick reference compendium close by and since I'm making a wizard, I'm also using the spell cards. Alright, so let's start with the character sheets. There are several different character sheets. Uh, they're easily distinguishable by the imagery in the center. Now, these here came with the False Prophet expansion and this one is for the Druid. This one is for the um, characters that reach level 5 and start branching out and could come in handy. And then there is a wizard a knight which I don't have here for the moment but it's a, a lady, lady in, uh, in an armor on the front of that one. Then we have the warrior priest. Um, we have the Alchemist and we have the Wolf and the Wizard. In our case we are using the Wizard. Um, the Dwarf is used for any other profession except the Warrior Priest, the Alchemist, the Wizard, the Knight and the Druid. And the reason they are different is because they have some stats that differ. For instance, the wizard does have the arcane arts skills, which is not listed on the, the uh, dwarf sheet, for instance. Anyways, um, wizard. And uh, next step is to take a look in the book. And I do recommend reading up on the character basics, the character basics before you uh, start creating your characters. Um, you can read about the basic stats. And the reason that you should look into this is that it differs slightly from some other RPGs. Um, strength is not used for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Instead, it's dexterity that is the main stat for for uh, for fighting. Strength, on the other hand, is used to determine how much you can carry. Uh, some tasks that you might have to perform in the dungeons uh, is also related to strength. But um, uh, first and foremost, it decides what well, it tells you what kind of weapons you can use and how many hands you require to wield them. Uh, then go through damage bonus, natural armor, energy, luck. You need to know this before you start creating the characters you understand what you're doing. Sanity, species, hit points, profession, um, and that kind of thing. So it also goes through the skills and tells you what the different skills do. Anyways, uh, then we have the chapter creating your character. So we'll go through this. First off, you need to roll for your stats. And uh, this is 
done according to the descriptions of the different species and I'm going for a human. So first of all, let me write that down. Human. And there's no point in writing wizard because this is the wizard sheet so it's not noted anywhere. And uh, maybe we should give him a name straight away. Let's go for uh, Ixius Storm Bro. For instance. All right. So, rolling stats. And we have a human, and they are quite simple. They have 30 plus 1d10 on each stat. So I'll just take my die and start rolling. So strength, oh, is a strong one. 40. Constitution, 37. Dexterity, 32. Oops. It's not in the tray, so we'll roll that one. 39, come on, what the devil, uh, 32 resolve, and then we had hit points, 1d6 plus 7. That's 8, that's very good is it? Once you've done that, you may re-roll two die rolls, including the hit point, uh, and choose the higher result. So in this case, I'm pretty happy with everything uh, except dexterity, result, and hit points. So I think we will re-roll the hit point, and we get the three instead. Uh, I forgot. What was it now? To make sure it's correct. Uh, plus seven, so we end up with ten hit points. That's much better. And I could either reroll the resolve, which is the ability to keep calm uh, and also the contribution to the party morale, or I could reroll dexterity. In this case, I think I will go with um, dexterity. So that's thirty-five. Next thing is, I'm allowed to distribute 15 points to these, not to HP, but to the, to the other stats. But no more than 10 points in any specific stat. And uh, seeing that this guy is a wizard, then wisdom is very important. So it's a no-brainer for me to increase this one to 49. And... Uh, then we have five points that we could distribute. There's no point in even strength, I think. Mm -hmm. Dexterity could make him a better fighter or resolve uh, to make him less prone to fear. I think I'll go with resolve in this case since he will not be my prime fighter anyway. So 37. Uh, then we have Damage bonus, which goes here, we have movement and we have mana. Uh, natural armor as well. Uh, he, movement is always 4, unless otherwise noted somewhere, but in this case I know for a fact that it's 4. Um, damage bonus can be found in the book, uh, starting at 50, so there is no damage bonus. Good mistake. 0. Natural armor starts at constitution 5, so that's 0. Mana is 1.5 times the, uh, the wisdom. Uh, so that is 25, 16, 74. Right, me and math, I think it's 74. Last but not least, we have this one-handed, two-handed class. So this tells you which 
what kind of how, how heavy a weapon you can wield. So once again, rule book. Have a table for this. 200 strength, 100 strength. <coughs> Sorry. Um, he's got strength 40, which means that with one hand he can wield class 3 weapons. So that goes there. And with two hands he can wield class 4 weapons. So 3 slash 4. Alright, that's done. Uh, then we have the traits, and traits are basically talents. Um, they are just uh, related to the creation of your character and your species. Um, and in this case, the humans have jack of all trades, roll for a random talent from a chosen category. So then we need to find the talents. Here they are. Um, and we have physical talents, combat talents, faith, alchemist, common, magic, sneaky talents, and mental talents. Um, if you want to go for a really powerful wizard, I would say go for mag magic talents, but uh, I think it's a bit of fun to go with a common talent. A random talent from a chosen category. So let's choose cho uh, common talents. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, let's roll D. 20, shall we? 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Disciplined. It's got a military background. Here's increased the calm of calmness and the pressure the hero uh, spreads to the rest of the party. The hero gains plus 10 resolve. And the other members of the party gain plus fem resolve as long as the hero is not knocked out. The effect of the party is not cumulative, but the heroes have the same power for the more heroes. Blah 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 blah. Okay, so it's got plus 10 resolve. Wonderful. So let's go to the back of this one and write down. Uh, this is blend. Plus 10 resolve, plus fab resolve to others. So, since this one will be basically for life, we could just go in and change this to 47. Okay, next up we've got the profession and he is a wizard so we get to choose three spells and uh, well we could as well do this from beginning to end so let's start with the spells um, I'm using the spell cards here uh, we've got slip light healing flare Gust of Wind, Hand of Death, Protective Shield, Healing Hands, and Fake Death. These are the level 1 spells. Now it's always good to have some kind of offensive spell, so Flare is an easy choice for me. Then we have Light Healing. Uh, can heal a hero within 4 squares? Heals a d6. Or the, uh, Healing Hands where I need to be adjacent, but I do heal 1d8 plus 2 hit points. So th this one is more powerful, but requires close proximity. Well, I'll go with light healing, and then I think maybe we should go with fake death, in case things get, get so deadly. We could always escape the enemies by feigning death. So, alright, we've got our spells and we can write these down as well uh, fake death casting value shu seven sorry Swedish uh, mana eight upkeep zero and you could write the the effect if you'd like to uh, Light healing 
that is casting value fem fairly easy to cast 10 mana zero upkeep uh, plus and dsx point four squares and we've got flare uh, mana uh, casting value uh, let's see mana ten casting value eight upkeep zero magic missile quick worth writing down as well but I know that already so magic missile one d eight damage Right, we've got the spells down. Um, next up, talents, none. Perks, heroic force of will, and one arcane perk of choice. So let's start up by writing down heroic. Force of will, and I know for a fact that that is plus 10 to any skill or stat. So you spend one point of energy to get a temporary bonus of plus one, plus 10, sorry, uh, to any skill or stat. But then we had a one arcane perk of choice. Page 169. So we could choose to spell master, energy to mana, inner power, in tune with magic, and quick focus. Now I do have a magic missile, and inner power increases the power of the damage. Other magic missiles cause an extra d6 point of damage. That could surely come in handy. So let's go for inner power. Plus 1d6 damage to magic missiles. So if the wizard spends one point of energy before uh, casting, in this case, flare, it would do 1d8 plus 1d6 points of damage. Okay. Next step, starting equipment. It's got a small backpack and a staff. So let's write down the staff and a small backpack. And this is where the quick reference compendium comes in handy. We can find all the equipment, all the weapons and stuff in here. So let's see, staff is uh, 1d8 damage, oh sorry, let's put this in the right hand, 1d8, uh, it's class 2, which means I can easily wield it with one hand, it's got an encumbrance of 5, it's defensive. Total damage is 1d8. In case I had some kind of talent or maybe a damage bonus or something, the damage might be increased. So that's why we have damage and total damage. So if I had damage bonus of plus 1, I would write 1d8 here and would write 1d8 plus 1 here. And it's defensive means it's got plus 10 when parrying. And all the starting equipment does uh, come with uh, uh, some damages. Now, I realize we should have had... All right, um, here we go, T4. One point of durability lost already. Oh, that's pretty good, as good as it could, could be. Um, 
Next up, it says a wizard may never use armor heavier than tier two. And then we come to the skills. And these uh, combines the this modifier with your basic stat. So if we look at combat skill, it says dexterity. And the dexterity of our character is 35. And the modifier is minus 5, meaning that the combat skill will be 30. Range skill will be 25. Dodge will be 25. Pick locks will be 15. Barter uses wisdom is plus 5, so that's 54. Heal uses wisdom, minus 5, that's 44. Alchemy, minus 20 wisdom, that means 29. Perception is wisdom, minus 10, that's 39. Arcane Arts is plus 10, so that's 59. Foraging is minus 20 on constitution, so that's 17. Battle prayers is not applicable. Hit points plus minus zero. Okay, so that's the basic um, wizard. But then we have something called a free skill, uh, which says that you may choose. Uh, if you can see this, oh, there it is maybe. Uh, you may choose one skill that has a negative modifier to improve. This skill value gains a modifier of plus ten. All right, so <coughs> negative uh, if you look at the example here, it's a bit ambiguous, but a warrior that has a minus 20 modifier to pick clocks by adding the free skill bonus of this skill, it would instead become minus 10. So we are actually adding plus 10 to this modifier. So let's see, she's not right there, he's not right there, he's a wizard. And so we could choose any one of the negative ones and add plus 10 in to this value. So, um, combat skill is pretty good to have, I think. Um, 30 is pretty low. So instead of getting minus 5, we get plus 5 because we add plus 10 to this. So plus 5, 35 plus 5 is 40. That's decent enough. Okay, we've got that down. Let's go to the next step, which we can find here. Um, skills done, we've got magic spells chosen, um, we could write down the sanity, which goes down here, which is 8, luck, all non-halfling heroes start the game with zero luck, level of your hero is 1, energy is 1, unless otherwise noted, Okay, so that is that. Next step is to roll for a background. Now this is optional. Um, the backgrounds are not fair in any way. There are some that are bad, some that are good, and uh, some in between. Some will give you personal quests and some won't. So there's no fairness to this and it's not meant to be fair, just like life. So, roll for it if you like, choose for it if you like, ignore it if you like. 11, in this case, the fraud, um, not applicable to wizard. That was a good stroke of luck, because fraud is not one of the best ones. 20, that is afraid of heights, okay. Uh, a few things in life, a fair, blah, 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 blah. personal trait. Whenever you take a fair test, 
but not a terror test. You get a plus 10 modifier on your resolve. However, whenever you are on a bridge, your resolve is half rounded down and your combat skill and uh, range skill suffers a minus 20 modifier. And there is a square here for background. And this will never go away. Um, so we have a plus 10 to fair. Uh, well, let's to resolve when checking. Uh, then we have uh, uh, res on bridge minus twenty combat skill range skill. Okay. The last step is to buy equipment. Now every hero, unless uh, the background tells you differently, will start with 150 coins. Um, mm -mm -mm. So then we go to the equipment list again. Oops, sorry. Um, and see what we can buy. Now, I tend to like to buy a torch. We'll put that in the left hand. Uh, as it will, there are quite a few enemies that have pyrophobia, which means they will be less effective against him. And you can also use the torch as a weapon to push enemies back. And it will also increase your resolve and it will make you increase your perception. So it is pretty handy. Um, that's 15 coins. Um, might be a good thing to have in some kind of armor. The armor is very expensive. But we could go for a padded vest or a padded jacket. Well, just to show how we write this, let's go for the padded jacket. So on torso we add padded jacket. Uh, it's defense 2 and cumbrance 5 and it's stackable. Stackable means that you can combine it with any other armor that also have the stackable rule and the highest tier armor is the outer armor. So in this case if you combine this with a male coat for instance the male coat will be outside the padded jacket but the jacket covers not only the torso but also the arms so therefore we also write padded jacket here two and five and um, the durability of this uh, is tracked only on one of these oh, there you have the ones going for the arms and here you those three goes to the torso what you could do you could either use a, a colored marker or make a little mark like this then you know this one references to that one and if you had maybe a cloak you could do another symbol here and put it the same symbol there you can keep track of that but we need to see what the status is of our padded jacket and it's got a durability loss of four so it's really worn out. Now we have spent 135 coins. We've got and then 15 left. And I think we will use that those to buy three rations of food. We'll put them in a quick slot like this. Encumbrance for rashes one, so that means three. 
Um, three plus five is eight. Plus five is thirteen. Oh, the torch. We've got to write that one down. Where is it? The light source torches. Encumbrous one. Uh, okay, let's go. Six. Uh, five is eleven. Uh, fourteen. So he's carrying around fourteen points. And he could carry forty. He's got zero coins left, he's got zero XP, and there is no status effect on him at this point. So that means we have created our first character. Yep, that's it. I just realized there were two things that I should have talked about as well. So I think I will add them right here. Um, the first thing is the equipment. As you noticed, I rolled for damage on all the equipment that can be damaged. Um, but I didn't roll for availability. And uh, there's an option here in the game. You could either start your game with the equipment that you want without rolling for availability. But in that case, that means the character has had the equipment for a while and therefore it must be also worn and damaged. You could also just keep the money and don't buy your equipment. And once you start the game, you could then buy the equipment. You would then roll for availability instead, once you get to a settlement and try to buy this. But the equipment will be in pristine condition, with no damage. So there's a choice, and it's yours to make. The th second thing I want to talk about was party morale. Um, once you have created all your characters, you need to calculate the party morale. And party morale is the resolve of each hero divided by 10, rounded down and added together. So, in the case of Ixius, our wizard here, we've got 47 as the resolve. So his contribution to the party morale would be 47 divided by 10, that's 4.7, rounded down, so that's 4. So he would contribute with 4 points to the party morale. If the other three heroes would have a similar resolve, and each would contribute with four points, then we would end up with a party morale of 16. All right, just wanted to add that. Thank you for watching. Um, the next video I will dive into how to start playing the game.